Okay, so hopefully you can see my, my presentation now. Um, yeah, so I think I've met most of the people here, or at least I recognize most of the names, but if we haven't actually spoken, uh, I'm Eli. My pronouns are he, him, and they, them. Um, I'm the one who's been doing most of the technical development on Muon Galaxy, which is our work to extend, Muon, uh, extend Galaxy to the Muon science domain. Um, the team currently is me, Patrick Austin, Leandro Liborio, and Alejandro Gonzalez Beltran. Um, we've had a few other people work on the project, Anish, Jotish, and Simone, who've now left the team but have contributed in some way. So I thought I'd acknowledge them here. Um, a brief disclaimer I forgot I was giving this talk until Monday um, until I was reminded. And I threw these slides together this afternoon. So they're a bit disjointed and dense, and I apologize in advance. Um, so my team is based at the uh, STFC Rutherford Appleton Laboratory in the UK. It's home to the ISIS neutron and muon source, which is one of only four muon spectroscopy facilities in the world. Um, so beam time is quite limited and expensive as well. The team is based in the scientific computing department, which develops computational tools for the experiments at RAL, including ISIS, um, and also for the wider academic community. So we live in this, this little building here, or some of us live in a little building that's not even in this picture um, these days. So a bit of background on what muon spectroscopy actually is. Um, Basically, it's a way of studying the properties of a, a material of interest. Um, so the material has a particular structure and you make a little target and you just fire a beam of muons at it. And muons are positively charged particles that are about one tenth of the mass of a proton. So they behave a little bit like protons when you put them in a material. So you fire your muons at your sample and the muons get sort of implanted in the sample somewhere. Um, and that somewhere is dependent on what the material, what elements are in the material, the structure that it has, um, various properties. And the place where the muon stops is known as the implantation site or the stopping site. After an average of 2.2 microseconds, the muon will decay um, into a positron. The positron is then ejected from the sample and detected with a positron detector. So by detecting these positrons, you can make um, calculations to figure out where in the sample the, mu the muon was and things like what spin it had and stuff like that. And that all gives you information about the material properties. Now we work specifically on muon simulations. So uh, I mentioned the stopping site. This is a really common thing that people want to learn or find for their, for their particular material of interest. Um, and simulations can help to make predictions about where the stopping sites might be in a structure, make predictions about material properties based on that. Um, if you've already got some experimental data, simulations can enhance your analysis of it. And overall, this just allows more efficient use of ISIS beam time. Uh, on the right here is an example of crystalline silicon. This has two muon stopping sites. One is sort of in the middle of the tetrahedral um, structure, and one is right in the middle of a bond between two silicon atoms. So our project is called the Muon Spectroscopy Computational Project. We are creating a sustainable, accessible, and open source ecosystem of tools for muon science. These include PyMuon Suite, MuSpinSim, and MuDirac, which are all command line tools for modeling, modeling muon interactions in various ways. Um, I'll, I'll skip over the details of, of what each of them does. Um, but Muon Galaxy is an STFC hosted Galaxy instance that is going to include the tools above. So we've already implemented some of these. We've still got some to do. Um, I guess that's the focus of, of this talk, really. Um, and our instance is available at muongalaxy.stfc.ac.uk if you want to go and look at it. So here's an example of the kind of workflow that you might want to run if you want to find muon stopping sites and then do extra work based on that. 
you start with a structure file that represents, you know, your structure and your target structure. You basically make, you can make like a hundred copies of it. And in each one of those copies, put a muon in a random location in the structure. And um, once you've done that, you take all those copies and you relax them to find the lowest energy state. Um, and then you run a clustering algorithm to say, are there places within this structure where the muon tends to, um, I want to say gravitate towards, but it's obviously not gravity, but it's, it's a low, it's lowest energy state. Um, so by analogy, gravitate towards. Um, yeah, so there, there's likely to be locations within your structure where the muon tends to end up, um, and those are likely to be your stopping sites. Once you have that information, you can do a bunch of post-processing um, using some of our other command line tools. The key thing here is that we want to get this workflow into Galaxy um, as much of it as we can by building tools for each of these steps. So that's what we're doing. Um, sorry. Um, so we've got quite a few tools now for different stages of this workflow. Um, we're also building workflows that chain them all together. So this is that generating the random structures, relaxing or optimizing them to get the lowest energy state, and then clustering them, just like we saw before, um, with various input files to facilitate that. And we're going to be expanding these once we, as we develop more more tools as well. Um, we're also working on a visualizer using a package called ChrisFizJS uh, Chris that was developed within our group. Um, this has been on the back burner for a while. We did a very basic integration, um, but didn't wire up all the interactive bits. Um, so that that needs some work at some point. But right now, it's sort of been deprioritized as we focus on on the tools and the workflows. Um, so a bit of a timeline of how this has all come together. Um, I've included this for the benefit of um, the astronomy community who I think is just starting to look at Galaxy. I don't know if any of them are here today, but um, I'll send them the recording anyway if they're not. Um, so we had our first meeting in with the Galaxy team in March of 2021. Um, after that, I started to experiment, set Galaxy up on a VM, play with it, build some prototype tools and stuff. Um, I ended up giving a talk at the Galaxy Community Conference in 2021, where I basically said what we were trying to use Galaxy for and then spewed out a bunch of questions. Um, a lot of people gave me answers to that questions and I realized how knowledgeable and supportive the Galaxy community is. Um, and I think this was sort of the event that really sold me on the idea that Galaxy was a really good platform to use for what we were doing. So after that, we started tool development in earnest. Um, I set up a development server to host those tools in a place where other members of the team could play with them. Um, and then as I did so, and as we got more ideas about how we could connect Galaxy to different bits of infrastructure, I realized that I would really benefit from learning how to do that. So I went to the Galaxy admin training at GTN Tapas, which was a really great event, very valuable, gave me lots of ideas of how we can expand Muon Galaxy in the future. Um, in May of this year, we also set up the material science subcommunity and subdomain um, in Galaxy Europe, which is still under construction and is basically just me at the moment, but it's there and we want to expand it. Um, in August, we finally launched our production server to the public and we put our tools on the tool shed. And then in September, we presented our work at three different conferences just to try to disseminate as much as possible to people who might be interested in using it or in developing more material science tools for Galaxy. Along the way, we've done a bunch of collaboration with the wider community around Galaxy. So we added some new data types to the Galaxy code base. Um, I raised some accessibility issues in the new Galaxy history, which other people then also jumped onto and which I think are being worked on at the moment. Um, we've reported various bugs and they've often been fixed really quickly, so thanks. 
Um, we received lots of support as well with code review and tool tools. Uh, thanks especially to Bjorn, who I don't know how you get to the tool, uh, the pull requests on our tools repository quicker than I do, um, but I appreciate it. Um, as I mentioned, we have Materials Galaxy under construction at materials.usegalaxy.eu. Um, the idea with this is that there are a few other people um, looking at using Galaxy for things like neutron science. Um, and we are keen to collaborate with them and maybe have a unified instance where we can um, have all those tools on there. And recently we've kicked off the Euroscience Gateway project. Um, so we in the material science community are part of Work Package 5, which is focused on community engagement, adoption and onboarding. Um, so this is going to be great for just knowledge sharing with other communities that are also new to Galaxy. What we've got upcoming, um, more tools and workflows, as I mentioned, we're going to develop some tutorials for the Galaxy training network um, and then try and connect things to other STFC infrastructure. Um, this includes, we've got, we've got lots of stuff at STFC that we'd love to connect to. One is like our HPC cluster. There are various, um, like maybe, maybe we can connect to like experimental data stuff, but we haven't had those conversations yet. So we don't quite know what's possible. Um, but the stuff is there. We just need to figure out how and if we can access it. There's also a number of material science databases that we're interested in in connecting to and providing as sort of reference data. Um, some, again, some within STFC or contributed to by STFC and some completely outside it. And lots of general outreach within the material science community, including within our own facility. We've already had some chats with people who work on um, in separate groups, but on, on other tools, but who are interested in integrating them into Galaxy. Now they've seen what we're doing. So that's good news. Um, some, uh, some of the lessons learned from this whole experience. Firstly, that the Galaxy community is really supportive. I found it really good to be part of. Um, you've got so much experience to draw from and you're really open to new collaborations, which has been, you've been very welcoming of us as a new, as a new community, which has been great. Um, working within the Galaxy platform has meant less overhead for us in terms of UI and more time building and improving our tools. And the reproducibility features of Galaxy actually encouraged us to make improvements to the rest of our packages in terms of sustainability. So um, wanting to use these packages in Galaxy tools meant that we had to set up PyPy and Conda releases, um, submit things to uh, the biocontainers repository and set up continuous integration pipelines. So it's been, it's been a net positive for our sustainability in general as well. There have been various challenges, and since this is sort of a quite developer heavy, heavy um, space, I thought I've mentioned some of them. Um, one of the one I, I forgot to put in is just like when you get started, it can be quite overwhelming. Um, and there's a lot, a lot of things are like biology focused. And if you don't know biology, it can be hard to like um, follow some of the tutorials just because it's a bit too much. Um, but I kind of forget that because I've been doing this for a while now. Um, these are things that have come up a bit more recently. First, that I realized recently there's two sources of tool best practices. One is in Planemo and one's in the IUC, and both of them are missing some things. Um, I think this, this could be improved. I think Bjorn raised an issue on our tools repository, pointing out a bunch of the things we could, we could improve on. And I think a lot of those aren't documented anywhere else, so that would be useful to have. Um, I mentioned we set up a materials.usegalaxy.eu subdomain. I found this process quite confusing. Um, it seemed to be a case of ask someone what to do rather than, and I think we could do with um, some more documentation for this, especially as you seem to me to make pull requests against multiple different repositories to get everything set up. Um, in terms of administration, the Galaxy admin training is fantastic. I've been super impressed by it. Um, but it is tough to go beyond it. Um, I have rarely needed to do so, but there's the occasional case where I've wanted to configure something um, very specific. And I've tried to find it in places like use Galaxy 
um, playbooks and such, but it's really hard to use those as a reference, partly because they're so big, partly because it's split amongst multiple things and it just makes it really hard to search. Even if I'm trying to find like a particular keyword, I don't know which repository it's in, so it's hard to find it. Um, I don't quite know how, how I would suggest improving that, um, but I wanted to mention it. Um, right now we're struggling with upgrading to 22.05. Um, it doesn't work. I'm not sure why. It might be specific to our infrastructure. Um, but also it seems that the way to get updated configuration is just to go do the Galaxy admin training again, or at least look through that page and notice any changes. Um, it would be nice if there was a better way to do that. Maybe something, a page that just sort of summarizes what's changed about sort of the recommended installation um, rather than having to look through all the Gal Galaxy admin training tutorials. And finally, a couple of open questions that perhaps we could discuss now. Um, one is around how to keep up with significant Galaxy decisions and developments without attending tons of meetings, ideally. Um, I found that being sort of on the periphery, some things change while I'm still trying to develop against them. Um, and I don't know that that's happened. So this happened with um, the existing visualizer plugins. The JavaScript got rewritten a bit or restructured a bit. I didn't realize this happened. And then I came back to our visualizer and it just didn't work. Um, and I had to dig around to figure out why. I think some of these decisions and developments are contained in things like the release notes. Um, but when a release is delayed by months, that becomes less practical to keep up with those. Um, if there's just a repository where there are loads of notes on this sort of thing, I, I haven't found it. If there is one, please tell me where it is. Um, because I think sometimes it just feels like I'm very out of the loop on stuff, but I don't wanna have to attend like tons of meetings to try and get more in the loop. Um, and the second one is about how to build up um, our user and developer community. So there's a lot of people um, within this community, most of them haven't heard of Galaxy at all. And unless we go really into depth in explaining what Galaxy is in terms of, it's like a platform for fair data analysis, not just a GUI, people think it's just yet another GUI that they're gonna have to learn or that will die out immediately. Um, and yeah. Um, so yeah, I guess that's sort of something we can draw from more experienced communities. How do you sort of make those first steps? Um, yeah, thank you for listening. Um, you can contact me at eli.chapic at stfc.ac.uk, but I am going to be absent for all of November and December. Um, so Patrick Austin, I don't know if he's here, is going to be covering for me. Um, you can contact him at patrick.austin at stfc.ac.uk. Thanks everyone. Uh, I'll take questions. I see Martin's got his hand up. So that was an awesome talk, Eli. Thank you very much for sharing that. Um, can we go back one slide to your open questions? So I was curious, so the first bullet point here, is this um, like on top of, on top of the release? Did you hear me? Um, I think you dropped out for a second. Say that again. I'm sorry. Is this question on top of the Like, are you aware of You're You're really choppy. Sorry, I can't. Well, she's asking, asking. Is, this, is this on top of the release? Yeah, so they said, like, I, I can read through the release notes, but like 2205 was a release that took eight months. And so a lot happens in that time. And like, there, there's so many changes on the repository every day that I can't keep up with it all. Um, and yeah, it, it feels like sometimes, I guess I'll ask about something and the, the answer will be, oh, we changed this a while ago. And maybe it's just that I'm not, I don't know. I must, uh, if I may add to this, uh, also a great talk. Thank you for that. And uh, regarding these JS visualizers, so our JavaScript plugins currently 
do not particularly the, the external visualization plugins we don't have proper tests for them so hopefully when in the next releases we have testing for these plugins then these things um, won't fall through the gaps anymore so if there are changes during the release cycle people would see oh look these tests are failing and uh, hopefully we can avoid that but i totally understand your frustration there if there are no tests for the visualizations we make changes some um, are not properly adjusted to it because they are not tested so we don't detect that and that can cause problems but hopefully that'll get better soon Thanks, that sounds good. Yeah. yeah, I think it it's like the modularity of Galaxy is really useful in the sense that we can just plug in a new visualizer or plug in tools that we've written. Um, but then it means that, yeah, they're not covered by any tests because it's a new file sort of thing. Um, yeah, I remember like tool best practices suddenly changing as well, or su suddenly from our perspective, suddenly we suddenly discovered the change and had to rewrite a bunch of stuff um in like our tool tests as well so hopefully those kinds of changes sh should be pretty rare um i'd be interested in following up on specifically the the visualization issue after this and, and figure out what what change um caused issues for you because we do try to make sure that stuff remains backwards compatible like even the old mako based visualizations should still for the most part work unless they were using galaxy internals right that we can't necessarily maintain forever and that's why we've tried to establish a better um interface there that that's a little more stable yeah this was a little while ago but i think i remember at least what the commit that caused problems was so i can try and go back and find that yeah that'd be great thank you uh eli uh so first of all yes very uh great talk and very very useful to us especially uh especially all the details about uh, the frustrations and the difficulties uh, going from release to release. This is this is helpful. Uh, so what you are saying is uh, with regard to the changes to set up an installation that happen after a given release, we tend to include them all, sort of group them all together in release notes. So the release notes will contain stuff that has changed in terms of here is what you need to change in your setup, plus here is this new great feature, et cetera, et cetera. What you are saying is that it would be helpful to have a designated section or page or whatever, which would be specifically for admins, what you need to change to make this release work, right? Yeah, definitely. Something because yeah, I like, yeah, because like, I think I've, I've got like good attention to detail and I can read the Galaxy admin training tutorial for the Ansible installation and notice what's changed from before most of the time if it's like one line then probably not but if it's like a chunk like it was this time with the change to dg unicorn um i can sort of spot those things but i don't want to have to do that with 10 tutorials and i don't think you can expect everyone to go through and try and sort of filter out the whole thing this time each time or try and read like the markdown diff or whatever so yeah having a, a dedicated page that comes out with the release note saying this is what we, which is what changes we recommend for an Ansible configuration would be great. Thank you. We'll try to improve that. That was very quiet, but yes, Bian, go ahead. Um, I have two questions. Um, one for the community so in the galaxy user interface there's still a little bit um, of genomics included how big i mean is it a big problem for you or is that okay-ish and the second question um you as an administrator that, that deploy a galaxy instance do you think that two releases a year would help you or are three releases okay or are you actually skipping releases? I'll answer the releases one first. I think because we've only, I think we set up our servers properly for the release 2101. 
and then there's only been one, one release since that so i wouldn't i don't think i've got enough experience with like regularly up, upgrading for releases to comment on that um the other question was about yeah can you be more specific about like what do you mean with the the galaxy ui including genomic stuff Ah, oh, cool i mean if you haven't recognized it that's maybe the answer i, I have but i was wondering <laughs> if you were thinking of a specific area no, I mean, there are some very tiny details like the DB key that you need to set for a few data types or, or for data sets. Um, there's a reference genome, I think, still in the upload dialogue. I, I, I'm just wondering how big this problem is to communities that are not from life science. And so, we, I mean, we have the assumption that this might be a big problem, but we don't know. So that's why I'm asking how much of a problem is that actually? Yeah, so I'd say the most the places I've noticed it most have been in the sort of tutorial material and like um, the like interactive tour of Galaxy. There's a few bits in that that like very ex like reference very specific genomics or biology topics. And it's sort of like, oh, that, where's that come from? Am I supposed to know what this is? Um, it does. I guess it makes it feel like it's it's for that and not for material science. Um, and in a way that like, I feel like most of it could be made, especially in the interactive tools could be separated out from the biology stuff. Um, I guess there are like specific integrations of things that we don't strictly need. Um, like in the tool developments, you have like the EDAM ontology, which we don't really use. So, I mean, but we can just ignore that. Um, but yeah, if there's sort of an expectation, if we're contributing to things like, um, bio containers, for example, or workflow hub, if there's an expectation, if those are built with the expectation that you're going to be uploading biology stuff to them, and then we come in with stuff that doesn't fit into that domain, that would be confusing. Um, but I think within Galaxy itself, I haven't encountered too much that's been like, oh, this is really genomics heavy as a feeling. But we will probably have to check that with users and get their feedback as well. Cool, that's super helpful. And and since you mentioned interactive tours, um, do you use them a lot? Is that something that we actually should more improve? So, for example, we, we changed the 101 Galaxy training um, with, with N to be not genomic focused, right? There are now two 101s in the training material, one that is still a little bit genomics and one that is completely generic. And we can do these things for the tours, for example, as well. Yeah, with the Galaxy 101s, it's, well, I guess it's cool with the Galaxy 101 for everyone, but it's still like a biology example. But yeah, you're right, it's it's a bit more, it's a bit easier to follow. Um, I, so we're not using interactive tools specifically at, at the moment. We've got the visualizer, but then we've just got like our regular regular Galaxy tools. Um, yeah, I can't remember what your question is actually about on, on the interactive tools side of things. No, that, that's okay. Cool. Thanks a lot. Are there any more questions? I have a comment on the second uh, question that you have here. So we were discussing the other day during the conference of the European Galaxy Days to have something like a community page. So that would be like, same as you have your subdomain now for the material science, have something like that, but on the hub, just for specific uh, communities as applications of Galaxy. This is something that could be helpful for you to reach out to people? Yeah, I think so. Um... Again, like the, there's like the Galaxy Get Started page, which is nice to have, but is a bit overwhelming and quickly goes, quickly sort of veers you into a biology space again. So I think having something sort of community focused. Um, and it's like, we're, we're, we're looking at building tutorials with like some simple examples from material science space using our tools. Um, but yeah, a more like general material science intro might also be be worthwhile especially if we start expanding beyond just muon science to things like neutron science and other things as well. So also on the reaching out 
I guess that the question is, for me, it's like the opposite. It's a question for you. How would you like to be reached out or how would you reach out? How to, how to reach people like you? Yeah, so there's a few like very um, like niche specific conferences, like the one that's so the conference that we, the three conferences we present at sort of run the gamut of places we want to advertise. One is like a very specific muon science conference. Um, one was like a general research software engineering conference. And one was um, focused on um, like software for like neutron and muon and x-ray science experiments. So um, that, la that last one was when we really targeted as like, these are people that would want to develop things for Galaxy if they were interested in it or administer their own instance. Um, but then the, so that was, yeah, more of a developer focus conference. Um, but yeah, I guess we have to go to like the really specific domain science conferences and try to get people on board with this thing. Um, yeah, like Muon Science Conference or like a Neutron Science Conference, but there's a lot of those around and, I'm not the one who knows which ones are good to attend. Leander is the one that knows that. Okay, um, maybe just to add, uh, as I'm here, and thanks Eli for, for the presentation, but um, I mean, we we are based on a national laboratory where are, there are lots of people working on and so, so we have, have started this uh, slow process of talking to people locally. So I think in addition to the conferences, which is very important, and Eli has been presenting in different places, um, as well as others in, in the group. Um, yeah, I think it is important to get these one-to-one -one conversations with people working in the domain. What Now we have also a, a challenge ahead. So now that we have the tools into Galaxy, we need to get users on the Muon community uh, to, to try them out and see how the, it works for them. Um, as well as, as I said, talking to, we are talking to people in slightly different domains to, to promote adoption. So uh, I think, I mean, actually we discussed in the, in the project uh, kickoff meeting, and I think this could be the kind of thing it would be great to have more domain agnostic uh, starting guys. And this is what um, Bea, I think Anne or you had come up with this name on, um, the propeller. So we are quite keen on on starting something up. So I was wondering again if what's the procedure. So if we if you create a page within the training material that uh, that perhaps Eli can start putting some thoughts into, and then of course it will be part of the project as well, and it could be open, of course, to the whole community. I imagine. Also, if there's something. Uh, starter kit, the propeller thing that you think should be updated, like I mentioned, there is too much biology oriented. You can just change it in the hub, I think it could be fine. Yeah. Okay, I see something in the chat from Danon. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't been looking at the chat at all. Sorry. Sorry, you might have addressed exactly what I was talking about while I was <laughs> trying to Google for the, the Cornell folks. I, I was just uh, linking up the, there were some people at GCC um, that were also interested in material science. I was just making sure you guys were um, connected if possible. Yeah, we're aware of the Oak Ridge folks and the Chess folks or the folks at Cornell. Um, yeah, I think we wanted to schedule a meeting and then haven't managed it yet. Nice. Questions or suggestions or comments for Eli and also Alejandra that is here. Uh, just one comment. Thank you so much for bringing up the accessibility issues. Um, hope, hopefully, we've sorted out most of them and we'll, you know, keep working on it. Yeah, and thanks for. I've seen like I haven't been keeping track of all the stuff you've been doing with the like axe linting and checks and stuff, but it's really good to see that being like expanded. So thanks. 
Uh, we have this uh, fairly loosely defined working groups system. So we have working groups responsible for various pieces, you know, UI, backend, tools, uh, outreach, training, and so on and so forth. So maybe you, one of your people who are actively involved in this can think of joining one of them. That's a good way of um, sort of knowing what's going on. Uh, they don't have yeah, to I'm in. I'm in a because... couple of the channels. Sorry, I'm, I'm, in a, I'm in like the tools and the, I mean, okay. I, I, I follow the tools channel. I occasionally dip into the UI UX channel, but only when I have something to ask about. Um, but I mainly treat them as like a place where I can go to ask questions rather than like a group that I should be coming to the meetings of it feels again because I feel like I'm on the periphery I don't know if I have much to contribute in terms of discussion and decision making I kind of want to be informed of the outcomes but I don't necessarily want to be there to contribute to everything well I don't think we consider you the periphery I think for us okay. uh, the fact that uh, people from domains like yours use this is, 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 is fantastic. So we actually want to help as much as possible. So you're not a periphery. Yeah. All right, anything else? Any other comments? No. Then thank you very much, Eli. I think that was a great presentation. And I hope it was very helpful for everybody to join. Um, yeah, there will be another call. I think it's by Danon in a couple of weeks, if I remember well, on the 27th, on the release process. So please join as well. At the same time, uh, we will provide a new link. And I think that's it. Thank you all for joining. And thank you again, Eli.